All right, welcome back. So in this episode, you're going to write your first few lines of HTML and CSS code, but do me a favor, download Sublime Text and actually code along with me. Because if you just watch me code, you're just going to get bored, right? It's, it's, you're not going to learn anything. You're just going to say, you're going to think you learned something, but nothing beats hands-on. So I want you to go hands-on, right? And I'm going to keep you entertained as best as I can so that both you and I uh, have fun while doing this. So pause this video right here, go ahead and open up uh, Sublime Text, create those two files like we did in the last episode and follow along. Right? This is, it's boring alone. It's, it's fun when I'm doing it with you, right? So let's get started. HTML and CSS. So we have the index.html and I'm just going to open the style.css as well. You can actually just drag it. So we have the index and we have the style and one keyboard shortcut that you probably already know that you have to start using is control plus S, which is to save. Now, when you've been born and brought up in India and you've been writing code and doing design for, you know, many, many, many years, if you, it, it becomes a reflex to control S, right? Because if you're not saving, you're, uh, you're losing files because India has the worst power backup ever and it's gotten better now, but you know, I used to have BSNL internet many, many years ago and yeah, I've lost many files. So control S let's get started. So first we have to tell the browser when a browser looks through this file, the browser has to confirm that the file is indeed HTML. So we write something called doc type HTML, right? This is just something that you're going to learn to have to do. It's something that every HTML fi file will have, which is exclamation doc type HTML. Now you see these, you see these, I don't know what they, what do you call them? The uh, what do you call them? Triangle brackets? Let me just Google what you call them. What is this called? What do you call this, man? I think you call this the angle bracket. So these are the angle brackets and the angle brackets serve a very important purpose in HTML code. It allows you to create or open a box like we've spoken about. So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to create the wrapping container. I like to call this the wrapper of the entire page that we're going to have. And as you can see, I started it with HTML and that's just syntax. This is syntax. These are words that you need to know. Um, and I ended it with slash HTML. So as you can see, I initiated a box with the angle brackets and HTML, and then I closed the box with a slash before the HTML. This is just something you guys have to get used to. Now inside this, this is the first box that's been created. I'm going to create a box called body. So I'm going to say body and I'm going to close the body box, right? And let's just, just, just to make it a little clearer to understand, I'm going to move this to the side a little bit. And as you can see, I'm creating a nested box. The body is now inside the HTML box. Now I'm going to create the first actual box, which we use the words div for in HTML div creates a standard box. So div and slash div, right? And inside this div, I'm going to write something. I'm going to write some text inside this final, the nested box, the you've seen those Russian dolls. We've gone all the way inside by removing the outside dolls and we come inside and I'm going to write, hi, or let's, Let's go programmer style, even though we're not actually programming in here. Uh, hello world. Right? And I'm going to save it as control plus S. Now let's open this in the browser. Let's see what this actually has become, right? So let's go into our website. How you open it in a browser, you just right click this index file, open with and Google Chrome. And as you can see, sure as hell, we have hello world, which is displaying. Now that doesn't look very exciting, but I want to make an observation about this. Why did that text go to the top left? Why didn't it go to the center or why didn't it go to the top right? And that's because when HTML creates something, it always starts at the top left, right? And that's something you have to get used to. So every thing that we work with in HTML is going to be stuck to the top left unless we use CSS to change its positioning, right? So just, you need to, this is something you need to remember. So we have hello world here and now let's play with hello world, right? Let's, let's create a, P tag around this, which stands for paragraph. Now in HTML and CSS, the P tag has some standard styling, predefined styling, which we're anyway going to change, but we're going to use the P tag so we can style all the P tags later. And then we're going to introduce something new called 
a heading tag or a header tag h1 and it goes all the way from h1 to h4 h5 it can go all the way but h1 allows you to create a header and these are just things you have to remember right this once you learn the basic keywords in html and there are very few you get the hang of html so i'm going to create a header and i'm going to say welcome right with an exclamation and i'm going to close the h1 and as you can see we have an h1 followed by a p tag right i'm going to save this and i'm going to go to my browser and i'm going to hit control r which is to refresh and as you can see the h1 tag has some default styling where is the styling coming from and the answer is the styling is actually coming from the browser itself many browsers have default styles for p for h1 all of it so we're just taking advantage of the browser styling but it's going to be inconsistent because different browsers style things differently so what we want to do is we want to explicitly tell the browser how to style our h1 and how to style our um, p tags and how to style our divs and all of that right so we're going to we need to start doing that so the way to link html to css is very simple uh, it is to tell html buddy there's a css file in the same folder as you start using it right and you know the interesting thing is you can actually write css just here you can write css in the html file but just for cleanliness we're going to write it in a separate file called style.css and this is st industry standard right nobody people tend to avoid writing html and css in the same file because it just gets confusing so what we're going to do is we're going to say and i'm just going to google this because i, I rarely use this uh, html connect style sheet Right, you can just Google this, and as you can see, because I haven't done this particular part in years, you can see how uh, you can just Google it, and this is how I get my solutions too. Uh, you put it in something called a head tag. So I'm going to copy the entire thing, Control C, and I'm going to go inside HTML. Right, the head comes before the body, so all HTML files have a head, and then they have a body. I'm going to press Control V, which is to paste it. Right now, let me explain this. Right, what does this mean? The link means I'm linking an external file. Relationship, rel, is style sheet. I'm saying, well, HTML, this is a style sheet. The type is text slash CSS, and the href, which in HTML, href means link, is instead of theme.css, we'll say style.css. So look in the same folder, and it'll, it'll try to find a style.css. So there's a reason I Googled this, instead of actually looking at the information beforehand and showing you this, it's because I don't use the link function very often. And I write, I've written millions of lines of HTML and CSS code. And you might expect somebody who's written so many lines of code to know all these things by heart, but you don't need to, right? And that's why, you know, I feel like Google has made such a big difference in online education. Because today, if you have a problem or a question, or if you don't remember some syntax, you can just Google it. In the 1990s, you could not. You needed a reference book with you and you need to memorize all of this. I want to show you live why memorization is not the way forward, right? The way forward is to know roughly where things are and then be able to Google things on spot and put it inside by itself, right? And obviously, when we start doing stuff on Webflow um, or we start doing stuff visually, you'll see why Googling is so important, right? It's just there's some things that a developer cannot remember and Google just makes your life really easy. So control S. I've linked the style sheet. Now let's test if the style sheet works. So we'll go to the style.css. I'm going to make our first rule. We'll say apply to all the H1s. And this is how you open brackets in CSS. Uh, use these curly braces. I'm going to say all the H1s color green. Right? And I'm going to save this. And as you can see in CSS, you need to use this color. It stands for text color. It's not just the color of the box, it's text color. If you want to change the color of the box, we'll have to use something called background color. But we'll come to that in a bit, right? Let's just do color green and let's, let's refresh our page. And as you can see, this became green. More than anything, when we do diagnostics, when it comes to programming, when we're trying to figure out what is wrong, we diagnose it one step at a time. Here, not only has this become green, so it's shown us that our... Um, that our CSS works, it also shows me that the link between the HTML and CSS, this line of code is working, right? So we've established that. And that's a beautiful part because uh, now we know that the CSS works, we can play around with it. So in the next episode, we're going to learn how to go a little more in depth and try to style our boxes in funky ways. So catch you in the next episode.